Good evening, everyone. Um, I hope everyone is safe this weekend. I hope everyone has a safe Halloween. Um, I'm not particularly one who celebrates Halloween. I always looked at it as the devil's holiday. Uh, even though some people still try to make it seem like it's all fun and games and oh, it's just for the kids, you know, it's just about candy and you know that may that may be all you know, good and well, but at the end of the day, it seems like people put more effort into uh, Halloween and they, they look forward more forward to Halloween more than actually putting something in motion for themselves or doing something for their, their lives. Uh, it, it's like um, we put more thought into what we're going to be for Halloween than what we're going to be for the rest of our life. And it's kind of uh, <sighs> discouraging sometimes to see how many adults, how many actual grown people um, put so much effort and emphasis into Halloween, almost more so than the kids, it seems like. And um, I don't think Halloween is something that necessarily, I don't think Halloween is something that necessarily uh, represents anything good. Uh, I really feel like it gives people more of a reason to just act crazy and just do spontaneous, irresponsible things. And it, it really, uh, I think gives off the wrong message to the younger people, you know. Uh we want to see what's happened today in history and uh in our history calendar. Let's see what happened today. I'm curious to see what happened today and tomorrow for Halloween. What's today? Interesting. Interesting. All right, October 30th, 1967, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Rev. Ralph Abernathy begin five-day jail sentences in Birmingham, Alabama for leading civil rights demonstrations. October 30th, 1967. So, Dr. King had to do jail time to uh, for demonstrating uh, civil rights uh, acts and... Uh, 1967, that was 30, 40, 55 years ago. And some of your parents are in their 50s. And what's unfortunate is that wasn't that long ago. And we were trying to basically get acknowledged as human humans in this country and as citizens in this country, um, you know, the same fight that we have been uh, battling for the last two centuries to just become free and to have e equality and to have basic, uh, you know, respect and acknowledgement, you know, it has been an uphill battle, it has been a up, uh, uh, struggle, and um, I just w I wish there was something in this generation, in this era, that could bring people of color in America together and want more for themselves and want more out of life outside of entertainment and fun. I wish there was more uh, substance and I wish there was more uh, that we valued as people in this country outside of partying, uh, having a good time, and just completely uh, destroying ourselves and our relationships and our morals in the process. So many, uh, so many people here of color, African descendants living in America, 
because we, so many of us do not know where we come from and because so many of us do not know anything about ourselves and anything about how we got here and uh, and uh, what made us this way and because of that um people here black people here in America are going to have a very hard time in a couple of years when li literally everything is gentrified and everywhere is gentrified and the only type of um it seems like the only type of uh, acknowledgement or recognition you're going to get as a black person is if is is only if you have a certain amount of status or certain amount of money and everyone else is is, is literally going to be gone with the wind do you remember the movie Pur the purge um I forgot the, the t which one this was, but this particular Purge movie took uh, took place in Staten Island in New York, and in that movie, there was so many subliminal signs to me, anyway, and if you think about it, in every city, in, in, in every inner city, in every state in America, that that's exactly pretty much what has happened to black people that live in these cities in every city that you can think of in America that it's been gentrified to the point where you know exactly where black people live and where black people don't you know exactly where pe black people go and where black people don't so even though there's no more segregation laws and even though there's no more uh, whites only signs in different places it's like you can tell just by the upkeep and just by the um, maintenance of a certain area that black people live there or they don't. Um, and that, that's been something that has also taken its course throughout history. Uh, there, in, in cities, there were times where white people in white upscale neighborhoods would actually build walls and barriers to separate them from where black people live and uh you know it's like you know there was just no type of um association or or any type of um mixing of of black and whites in in certain neighborhoods because of you know the and and cities like Detroit, cities that were in, uh, in the north, up north, grew so rapidly and so fast once slavery ended. You know, there were so many black people fleeing the south because of, um, you know, better opportunity. Uh, they were fleeing the KKK. Uh, they were fleeing lynchings uh, and just looking for um, a better opportunity to be able to make more money and provide for themselves and their families, a lot of the cases. So um, the, the cities up north grew so rapidly and the factories and the, and the plants and the jobs, they, they grew and populated so rapidly. And because of this, uh, white people would often either either riot or, or just cause uh, chaos because they were in fear that black men would come from the south and take their jobs and uh you know just overthrow you know everything and and everything would just be you know so a lot of the time when these when this would happen a lot of the times uh black people would actually begin to flourish black neighborhoods would actually begin to grow uh, uh neighborhoods in the, in the northern cities were actually beginning to flourish and grow and, and populate with black businesses and black, um, you know, churches and, and black, we, we had black hospitals, we had black doctors. There was, there was actual um, black Wall Streets in different areas of the country by the, you know, by the early 1900s that were actually flourishing. And, that, and that's what like, I tell people all the time. A lot of people don't understand is uh, slavery ended in 1865. That does not mean that things automatically overnight 
happened for black people. It, it's like uh, when slavery ended, it's like, first of all, so many slaves didn't even know that slavery ended. So it's like, imagine that. Imagine being in slavery and you don't even know that it's, that it's over with and, that it, and that, it's, uh, that it ended, that it was abolished. Um, yeah, it's like, uh, so it's like they, it, it took years, years for black people to actually get themselves to a point where um, they actually had an opportunity or a chance to build something and to make something of themselves in their lives and uh, actually uh, learn skills, learn how to read. It's like so many black people were not able to read, write, count. It's like... Uh, if all, if all you know if all you've been taught how to do is share crop all throughout your life because you were on a plantation all your life what what exactly are you supposed to do once you um you have your freedom and and you have an opportunity to to leave and go elsewhere and do better for yourself but you literally can't because you can't read a sign you literally can't because you can't read a um a map you can't read uh you know what i'm saying so it's like how were you really supposed to get away and um, improve life for yourself. And that's why all the stories of all the people that, that did break away from slavery, that did free themselves, that did uh, take chances and risk and sacrifices to relocate themselves to a better area and better place to uh, have a better life. Uh, Frederick Douglass, you know, is one of many who actually broke himself away, actually freed himself you know what I'm saying? He actually fought his slave master, like literally fought him hand to hand combat and, and to free himself from his plant from his his uh bondage from his from his master. And and, and it's like uh stories like that are just so brilliant and and impeccable to me because to have to go through such a, a fight and have to go through so much so much that you already endured up until that fight and then to fight at the very end and then free yourself and 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 take risks because even after that it's like it didn't stop there he still had to uh uh figure out how where to go from there how to get up north where to go to here to go go to here i'm pretty sure he faked like a a sailor's as like a, a sailor's outfit or something or a sailor's ID. Long story short, he uh, he had like he he met a woman that was a free black woman. She was a free woman, and she had helped him to impersonate a sailor or something, man. And that's how he was able to get from the DMV area to up north. You know, I think Philadelphia was first, and then eventually New York or DC. And then eventually New York, but that's just one of many stories, man. That where where someone had to take enormous measures and extreme measures to free themselves, and it's like if you didn't do that, you simply were gonna die a slave. Like that, it's like it's crazy how that was the only options for us back then. Where you either were going to make a sacrifice to rebel to free yourself. Or you were literally going to die a slave, die on a plantation, and being treated inhumanely and like an animal the rest of your life. Um, so once you know, once these these uh, and it's like at at these times, this is this is what's you know so amazing to me about black people back then compared to now. It's it's like we were coming out of an extreme, torturous, inhumane, degrading time in the world and in Black people's lives at that time. So we had to rely on each other. We had to depend on each other. We had to come together and we had no choice but to uh, want more for ourselves and want, and to want to do better for ourselves at the same time for ourselves and each other at the same time it's like that mindset doesn't exist today you know it's like that mindset doesn't uh it's like it doesn't um it's not even 
on black people's minds, it seems like, you know, because it's like, I feel like even with all the wealthy black people in, in the world right now, or even just this country, you know, just this country right here, it's, it's like so much can change if all the wealthy black people came together. So much can change if, if they actually came together and tried to figure out something, you know, um, how to build uh, businesses, how to create the black dollar again, um, you know, let's get how to create black farms and uh, black medical practices and black hospitals and black supermarkets. It's like there's so much money amongst wealthy black people just here in this country. It would be nothing to get these things started and going. But it's like, you know, it's like a thing of a past now. It's like, you know, no one's even thinking that way and thinking that. But it's like, just imagine how much that could change for us. Just imagine how much that can change things in our community, how much that can improve things in our communities. Um, it's like, we don't, we don't realize how much money we put into other things that, you know, don't hold any type of value, like, you know, clothes and, and, and jewelry and, and, uh, just all, all kind of in, things for entertainment. It's like all kind of things that we, 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 you know, invest and put our money into that doesn't reciprocate or bring anything back to us. And we, you know, over the years we have lost all, all, financial literacy. We have lost all sense of how to manage money and how to make money and how to spend money. We've, we've lost all sense of, uh, you know, just just how to put time and effort into something that uh, is going to grow and build. I would like to shout out uh, Dr. Umar Johnson in Philadelphia. He's starting a school and building a school uh, for young black boys and girls to go to. And I think it's a amazing thing that he is doing. It's, it's, it's a brilliant, impeccable thing. And I, I love that we, at least that there, there, it gives me hope that there's, there's someone out there and that's still trying for the black people, for the black community, for the black cause. There's someone out there that's still trying to make a difference and to build something to give back to our people, especially our young people who need it the most, who are deprived of everything that you can imagine of. And by the time these young deprived, uh, young deprived adults are, young deprived people are adults, they have no sense of what it's like to have anything. They have no sense of what it's like to own anything. They have no sense of like what to uh, invest anything or to receive anything. So by the time they uh, do get anything or they do have anything or they do get, it's like it's 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 something, it, it's gone. As soon as they get it, it's gone. Uh, this is why you see so many young black athletes in, you know, the NFL, the NBA. They come out of college or even sometimes high school and they make all this money. They make all this money and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to manage it. And before you know it, they blow it and they're, they're, they're broke and they're back in square, they're back to square one. And God forbid, if they get injured, it's like their whole lives are over and their whole careers are over because they never learned how to do anything else outside of sports or how to manage money or how to make money. So sports was the only thing that leaves, you know, and that leaves them devastated, that leaves them discouraged, that leaves them just down and out and nothing becomes of it. And this is why I was saying before in a couple videos before that it's so important for our young black boys, especially to know and to learn that there's so much more you can do outside of sports. You know, it doesn't have to just be sports. It doesn't have to just be what you're uh, physically able to do on court or field. You know, you have to be able to use your mind and exercise your brain as well and be able to implement things that your vision got visions up for and passions for and be able to implement that in your physical life you know but it has to start in the mental first and so many young black boys don't even uh get a chance to even know what the heck that even means man you know it's like so many black boys don't even get a chance to understand what like the beginnings of what that means and i feel like this this is something that can definitely be penetrated a little bit and, and the cycle can kind of break a little bit with 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 people like Dr. Uh, Umar Johnson 
doing things like building schools, it's like that's going to be such a huge, huge um, leg up for the intellect of young black boys and girls in the inner cities. And um, it's, it's, it's things like that that's going to help improve our communities and help improve our people because it's like the, the main thing is, and you hear this all the time, the main thing is it takes it's going to take a village to raise a child, and that's very true. So it's like if we can come, if the parents can come together, the black parents can come together first. If the black household can heal first, if the black uh, man and woman can come together and rehabilitate and recover first, then everything else, when it comes, everything else as far as what a black child needs in their upbringing and in their lives is going to naturally come. So many of our black parents are still battling childhood tra traumas themselves. So it's like, trying to give back something that you don't have is never going to work out. It's never going to be, you know, what you need it to be. So it's like, uh, if, if we can somehow get to, I'm so excited, guys. Y'all have no idea how thankful and excited I am. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, you have no, because I, I really feel, I really feel like I can start reaching people. I never wanted to be, big on the internet. I never wanted to be famous. I never wanted to be someone who is just uh, sucked into the social media thing. But at the same time, if I can find a positive in it and I can start to reach people with it, and especially the younger people, then maybe it's something that I can uh, effectively do. Maybe it's something that in this era, in this time, I can use as a tool to help others and to at least help others to see, you know, uh, one day I, I got, I got, you know, I got dreams and visions and plans to talk to people in the United Nations of Africa one day, you know, it's, that's going to be a nervous, <laughs> nervous time, nerve wracking time. But I have plans to do that one day. I want to tell them what's going on with the black person in America. I want to tell them what's been happening to black people in America since kid invasion, since kidnapping, since the Middle Passage, since slavery. It's like I want to inform them of everything that is going on right now. I want them to know about the crisis that um, our young black boys are in right now and the and, uh, demolition that's taking place of young black boys and young black men in America. Um, I want them to know how uh, black women are disproportionately being uh, put on birth control and, and, and uh, told to do what their what to do with their bodies. And, uh, and I, I want them to know how there's certain medical practices that they practice on us that wasn't that's not even for us and uh, was never originated to be for us. It's like, you know, uh, there's medical uh, practices and medical um, help and service in Africa that will blow your mind. They have technology and they have doctors and they have um, just practices that are so different from here that would be better for people of color. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a, a lot of, a lot of, all throughout history, things like birth control and, and uh, women's uh, reproductive organs and reproductive system has been experimented with and toyed with and tampered with all throughout slavery and all throughout history with white doctors and scientists uh, trying to f uh, figure out just exactly what, uh, just exactly how black women and uh, black people operate and work uh, through a reproductive way. And it seems like the control for black reproduction has been controlled and manipulated since day one. And even if uh, a certain experiment or a certain practice didn't go well or go as planned, uh, a black woman could bleed out right there 
on the table. And that would just be that. She would just be disposed of like trash, you know? So, I, you know, it's, I, I feel like uh, our history needs to be learned and it needs to be exploited and it needs to be exposed to everyone, to all the higher uh, higher powers of the world and the higher and all the leaders of the, the nations. It's like, um, especially in Africa, where we come from. It's like we're the only group of people and the only uh, race of people that don't have any type of support or backup. The, the black person in America are the only group of people that don't have any type of backup or support system or a, a home to go to. It's like um, technically we view this as, as our home because this is where we were born and raised. But we have no knowledge and we have no education of where we come from and where home really is for us so therefore um where do we go who do we turn to for help who do we cry out to who comes to our need we're sending billions of dollars to ukraine and we got hungry black people and hungry black kids on the streets holding signs okay um we got schools in the black neighborhoods and black communities closing down okay we got black teachers that are pinching pennies just to survive and just to have to come to work and come to school to deal with undisciplined, untaught, untrained kids that have zero sense of manners, zero sense of any type of intellect, zero sense of any type of comprehension, but we're sending them to school and expecting the teachers to be able to teach them and give them knowledge and information that they're not even capable of receiving. So it's it's like it's like if, if a kid can't even sit in a seat and, and and pay attention for more than two two minutes and and actually receive and I can comprehend what the teacher is saying, what what is exactly supposed to happen? And then these kids just get pushed through. They just get pushed through the school system, they just get pushed through grade to grade, regardless of how they performed the year before and the grade before. And then the next teacher that gets them is starting at ground zero, starting at day one, because everything that happened before, the kid didn't get taught nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, it's a deadly cycle. It's a crazy cycle that is uh, plaguing our young black youth, and they're definitely not receiving the education or the um, information that they need to be able to survive in such a world and in such a society where they're already viewed and perceived a certain way and to have to come up in a world in such a world without any type of knowledge wisdom or understanding of yourself can be very very detrimental and very very scary and very very uh it's like you're you're up the river without a paddle and that's exactly that's been exactly the story for so many black people ever since slavery was abolished you know, um, it's like, all right, slavery's over. You're free to go do whatever you want. And it's like, what? Like, what am I supposed to do? I don't have clothes, shoes, money, food, anything. And I'm supposed to just go wherever and start a life for myself and my family. And, 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 and it's like, you go from keeping you go from keeping a group of people from being able to read you literally uh you know you make it illegal you make it a crime for a black person to be able to read but then you know you, you turn around and you expect them to be able to go out here and make money and live and be prosperous and progressive and prestigious and 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 when that does happen it's like when that still happened despite the lack of everything, this, this is the lack of resources, the lack of information, despite all that. We, and when, and when black people still rose to a prestigious level, it's like, uh, we were literally bombed and we were literally burned and, uh, literally shot and killed and murdered and completely demolished 
So everything that was built up for ourselves, even after such a destructive uh, beginning and past, it was still taken away from us and torn down. So it's like, not this isn't a cry out for reparations. This isn't a cry out for uh, a handout. This is simply, can you please, this is simply, can you please acknowledge and recognize what you've done to us and what we have been through and what has happened to us since we were brought here. We didn't come here willingly. We were brought here. And even though there were black kings and black uh, uh, kingdoms and black people who were selling each other in the, in the slave trade, those people had no idea. Those those black people selling black people had no idea that slavery was going to be what it was going to be in America. They had no idea what they were getting walking onto them ships and get ships getting themselves into. They had no idea that they were going to be raped and, and castrated and thrown overboard and uh, tortured and and obliterated. Like you know, there were slaves that were literally jumping to their deaths off those ships during the Middle Passage. They were literally jumping off the ships to be to keep from bondage, to keep from having to endure slavery, to keep from having to uh, continuously be raped, continuously be beaten, continuously be just treated like uh, complete worse than an animal. It's like you wouldn't even treat an animal the way slaves were being treated. So, so there, there's a million, there's over a million bodies in the Atlantic Slave in the Atlantic in the Atlantic Ocean from slaves that had jumped overboard or who were thrown overboard because they were too sick or too uh, deadly deadly sick to to stay on board because they didn't want the sick slave to spread the sickness to other slaves or to other crew members. There were some ships that would uh, actually there were some voyages that were just actually. At, unsuccessful because of how gruesome and nasty and how sick people would get on board because of all the just the, the body, bodily fluids that would come from all the slaves it's like some of the bottom the bottom of some of those ships was as small as this room and there'd be over a hundred slaves packed in there chained to each other like sardines it's like you can't even imagine it you can't even think about really the the inhumane conditions that slaves had to endure coming over on the bottom of those ships. They said that there would be, you could smell them. You can smell the ships miles away before you can actually see them coming to shore. You could smell them. Uh, sharks would actually follow the boats. You would actually see sharks swimming and following the ships because there was so much blood at the bottom of the ships seeping out into the ocean. Sharks would actually, you can actually take the little telescope thing and, and see sharks following the ships, man. There was a story where uh, this this the ship crew, this specific slave ship crew, something had went wrong with the boat or the ship. Something had went wrong with the ship. I can't remember ver verbatim. Or exactly the story, but I, I remember along the lines where the slave ship crew, for some reason, couldn't the the ship could no longer continue on. I couldn't remember. I can't remember if it was a storm or something went wrong with the ship. But the ship, the slave ship crew members locked the ship was sinking or something like that it was like a storm the ship was sinking or something like that so what the slave ship crew did they they took the lifeboats they took the, the life safety boats and and disconnected them from the main ship and they locked the slaves that were on the bottom of the ship that was sinking they locked the, the you know the, the door that flaps open for, so you can be able to walk down to the bottom of the ship they locked that ship they locked that door 
and they got in they went and they got into the uh the little life saving boat and later on once they made it to shore wherever they made it to they they later on collected insurance money which was cargo insurance back then for all the slaves that were locked on that ship and sank to the bottom of the ocean locked chained so not only were they already chained while they were down there they were locked down there from the from the top and literally sank to their deaths drowned to the, in there and they sank and drowned sank to their deaths I'm sorry it's taking me so long. it's like hard for me to get it out because it's like it's inhumane to even think about what a way to die what a way to go not only were you in, in invaded you were kidnapped you were chained tortured and then drowned to your death completely helpless you're chained and you're drowning on the bottom of a slave ship to your death that's just an idea of what our people have gone through over the years up until now okay and the reason why I say up until now, because you're, you're still hearing about the tragedies and, and the atrocities that are happening amongst police shootings. You're still hearing about the tragedies and the, and the atrocities that are happening amongst black on black. And, and it's like all this stemmed from all this stems from how things have been controlled, manipulated and put in place for us. OK, the jails, all the penitentiaries. And in the United States are nothing but slave ships on land. It's like, you know, you got cells packed with people on top of each other and all in the same place. It's nothing but a slave ship. That's exactly how the slave ships were designed. You have, um, and, and it's like I said, it's the new plantations. So it's like, not only is it the, a, sla uh, a land, a slave ship on land, it's a plantation that is majority filled up with black men. The only reason, the, the main reason why I bring up our history with everything that I try to highlight and talk about is because I feel like if, if people can learn their history first, and people can learn where they come from and learn about themselves first. Everything else will fall in line. Everything else will start to make sense. You you will you're gonna want to build. You're gonna want to um, learn more. You're gonna want to know more. You're gonna want to come together with your 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 people. You're gonna want to find out just why this is the way it is. You know, you're gonna want that as a black person, as a black man, as a black woman. You're gonna want that. The more and more you learn about yourself, the more and more you learn your history, you have to know what was done to your ancestors here. Every black alive person in this country has an ancestor that went through hell. And they would want you to know that they went through hell. They would want you to know everything that they went through, just like you would. If you were being treated unfairly and you were being killed murdered raped and kidnapped and you would want someone to know what happened to you you would want someone to understand just what exactly it is you went through you would want people to know what your child had to see you know how many kids and how many had to watch their father get lynched or their 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 Mom get raped, like you, you know what I'm saying, and then they had to grow up with that shit. They had to grow up with that in their mind, in their psyche. So many of the of of, of the, the, it's like a, almost a, a whole race of people were a, a whole race of biracial people were created because of white men raping black women. People don't even acknowledge that. People don't even talk about that and think about that. All people want to say is, "Oh, you light skin. Oh, you acting light skin. Oh, you light skin this. Oh, you light skin." It's like. Y'all don't even realize, it's like when people say that, it's like, y'all don't even realize what y'all saying. It's like, how do you, how do you think someone got light skin? 
Please tell me. And, and, and there's so much division amongst black people when it comes to complexions and, and skin color and, and how dark someone is or how light someone is. And that's a stigma and that's a play and that's a, a, a something that was created to divide us and something that was created by force and something that was created by something that wasn't planned. A, a whole, so many babies were born on voyages during the Middle Passage. It'll blow your mind. You know how many black women got pregnant and black girls got pregnant from white slave ship members, crew members? And, and and were either either born on the boat or born once they got to the sh to shore and to the plantation. You know how many women had to walk miles and miles in chains with their baby in the hot blister and sun, and then just to go to the, the plantation and have to go to the field and and start picking cotton with their baby on their back. We come from this. This is what we come from. This is why we have so many uh, ailments and 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 deficiencies when it comes to being lazy or having, um, you know, certain uh, just mental health problems when it comes to um, just keeping, it, it's like, we, we, this is why we always mean mug. This is why we're naturally not looking like we're happy and why we're not always smiling or why we always have this down and out demeanor about us. This is why they always portrayed black people as angry and mean and, and unhappy. Back in the day, they used to make the cartoons with the black face. And, and, and they would always have a frown on the black face. They would, they would, white people would paint their face black and then have like a frown. And, and it's like, that, that's, that's exactly why. Because that's just, that was the image of a black person. And when slavery ended, the, the typical way that you would see a black person was, was homeless, um, Little to no clothes, um, looking sad, down and out, helpless. That was the image. So it's like they, that was act, the actual stereotype image for black people, especially black men. This, the, the typical stereotype, typical image for black women was a big butt and big mama. And she was in the kitchen and she was breastfeeding and taking care of Mass's kids. That was the typical image for black women. And that's all black women was, was, was good for was 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 giving it up to master when he wanted it and taking care of his kids when he wasn't home and and when he, and, and, and when the, and his wife wasn't home or didn't want to deal with it black black kids were like were like pets like you, if you go to someone's house and you see their dog or something that's how little black kids were in in master's house and on the plantations in the slave master's house. It's like they were like pets. Slave master can be sitting on the porch and he would have a little black kid sitting, laying on her on their back, and they would put their feet on their on their chest and on their stomach and just rest their feet there because there was they believed that the melanin in the in the skin of a black kid, they believed the melanin would actually heal them and draw out toxins through their feet. That same little boy can grow up and be beaten every other day or hung or lynched or sold off. Some black woman would lose all her kids at auctions. Some black woman would literally go to, she would be forced to go to slave auctions with all her kids and sometimes lose all of them. They all would get sold off. Now imagine that. Imagine your kids being forcibly taken from you and sold off and you never see them again. They said some slave women would be begging and pleading and crying and screaming for them not to take their kids. Now imagine that. And this is what we come from. This is why we are the way we are. No one wants to accept it. No one wants to acknowledge it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it until the day I die. God is my witness, and God is my help, and God is my strength to be able to get this message across to people because people just don't simply un understand why we are the way we are and why we're here. 
and why we do the things we do, but also why we have the abilities and the capabilities that we have. And I know no one cares, man. I know no one cares. I know no one gives a fuck about this shit, man. It shows. It shows. But it's like no one knows. And I know no one's trying to know. But it's like it's like if we can get if we can get to a point where the masses and the majority each one is teaching one. I feel like we can bring some sort of calm to the storm and we can start to educate. We can restart. We can rebuild our people. And it's like, if, if it's like, look, if we can come out of, if our people back in the day can come out of slavery and rebuild themselves and get up to a certain level, it's like, we can do that now. And we have so much more information and, and resources and support now. And, and opportunity now. So it's like if they can do it back then with such little help, such little resources, such little information, such little knowledge, and they still did it, then there shouldn't be anything stopping us. There shouldn't be anything stopping us in, in this era, in this time. I pray everyone has a safe Halloween. Like I said, it's not something I indulge in. It's not something I get into. But I I do want everyone to be safe. I do want everyone to uh, try and look past Halloween. You know, uh, let's, let's think about what we're going to do for these upcoming holidays and how you can get with family and see your family and talk with family and be around family and how you can set things up to... Uh, Have a better life and build a better life for you and your loved ones. And if you have kids, for you and your kids, man. I talk to the black men and I plead with them and I ask them to please just go home. Go home. Please be with your child. Black men that got sons, please go be with your son, man. Just please go be with him. If, if if you don't know how to, go talk to someone, man. Go go like open up, like go, just talk to someone. Go go to the, uh, a church or something and talk to a pastor or something. Like, if you can't afford therapy, just go t talk to go to a church, man. It's like this. There's if you can go to a strip club, you can go to a church. If you can go to a bar, you can go to a church. And the only reason why I'm saying church, and I'm not trying to force church or religion on nobody. That's exact, That's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, if church is something that you're not comfortable with, it's like you don't have to go to church during church hours. You can go to church after hours. You can try and catch somebody when when, when there is no service, and, and that's the perfect time to talk to someone. You see it in the movies all the time. You know what I'm saying? People going to the you know, the concession, the confession booth where they're just going into church and they're sitting down. It's like you have no idea. Or you can just go and just talk to God. It's like, who else better can you talk to than God? And uh, who else can give you better uh, guidance and direction than God? And he will. It's like, it's like people be thinking like, oh, just because God's not uh, giving you blatant, obvious signs, it's, it's like that he doesn't exist or he's not watching or he's not listening. It's like, man, if, if you were to start doing what, what's, what is in your heart to do, and if you were to start following your dream and your purpose and start talking to God, your God will literally make things so obvious for you. He would literally illuminate your path. And he would literally start giving you every red flag in the sky. You, you, you don't believe me, but I promise you. Yo, it's like things things will start to start make so much sense. It, it, it'll blow your mind. And, and, and people will start to show their true colors. Things will start to unravel right before your eyes, yo. It's like if you if you having a problem with like a coworker or something, or if you having a problem at a job or whatever it is, it's like that neck you be so wait, wait and watch. God will literally he will make he will allow something to happen, or he will allow you to see something or hear something that will that will um make you uncomfortable enough to make a decision. 
to, to make a change. That yo, that's literally how God works. I'm telling you, that's how God works. He will He will literally make He will allow something to happen or allow you to see or hear something that will make you uncomfortable enough to make a decision to make a change. And it's just that simple. And that, and that's how he will be throughout every, with everything the rest of your life. With people, with jobs, with money, with everything. Every decision that you, you make in life and that you have to come across in life. Because it's like, uh, if, you don't, if you don't learn to have this discernment and awareness for yourself, you're going to be just like the rest of the blind mice out here in the rat race. You're going to be just like the rest of the, mi the mice in the maze out here. Lost. Sometimes I have to forgive myself, man. And forgive others that I used to associate. Like, sometimes I sit, and, I sit back and think and reflect. Like, yo, I cannot believe that I used to associate and deal with some of the people that I used to associate and deal with. Like, I, I can't believe that I used to. But it's like, at the same time, I had to. To learn, to grow, to become more aware. It's like God allowed me to go through all those things with all those people just to be able to see, like, damn, like this this ain't it, you know, and this is this ain't life. And this like you don't you don't want to be like that, you know? So it's like uh trust him, talk to him, put your faith in him and, and let him guide you and he will, man. I had to understand that and learn that with myself. And there's still things that I'm battling to this day. You know, I'm not perfect and everyone has their battles, man, and their, their demons, you know. But it's like no demon is, is strong enough or powerful enough to overtake God's purpose and God's direction for your life. And it's just that simple. I pray everyone has a good night and continues to stay safe and Please continue to share for me and tune in. I truly appreciate the support. You have no idea. Um, and that's it. I will have more, more coming, more videos. Uh, I am getting uh, my training videos back up there. And I am going to start some new fitness journeys with a few different people so I'm excited about that stay tuned for that and uh if you want to get your fitness journey started please reach out let's get started let's do what we got to do and um we'll go from there much love stay prayed up peace